Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this pre launch briefing for the Flight of the Osprey. My name is GMF. I'm hosting this meeting, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the project, hand you over to the team who will tell you more. We're going to see the first uh, preview of the, uh, the movie, the project movie, and um, then we'll tell you how you can get involved as well in this rather exciting project. A little bit of information about myself. I, I've been a long time member of the Woodland Trust and in 2017 I was very intrigued to get an email saying they had put a nest cam on an osprey nest. I didn't know very much about ospreys, uh, just that they were fish eaters. And um, I started watching and I became absolutely enthralled. The trials and tribulations of their daily lives, their funny characters, all the things that they did, really quite uh, astonishing and intriguing. Um, Things were going quite well, but then in 2019, we got the sad news that an osprey from a neighboring nest had been electrocuted on a power line in Spain. And this was a real tragedy. That was Pian, JH3. And he was actually more or less cousin to our Lachlan, who was his ring number was JH4. Uh, it was very sad and um, people are trying to do something to prevent this happening in, in future. Then came lockdown. The world was absolutely enthralled by the Ospreys. We all watched and saw them raise their chicks. But last year, uh, sadly, Ayla failed to return. We waited, we hoped, uh, waited some more, and then had to conclude that she wasn't coming back. We have no idea what happened to her, but there are a lot of perils out there, uh, both man-made, a lot of hazards that humans cause, and uh, weather events and predators and, and so on. So Flight of the Osprey is going to follow sat-tagged UK Ospreys down the coast of Africa. So starting in the UK, going across Spain, France, Portugal, down into Africa, tracking them, stopping over in places where they rest uh, and highlighting the conservation issues that they face. So. That's a little bit of background. What we'd like to do now is show you the preview for the project film. Ruth, I'm not getting any audio on that. Can you, is anybody else getting any audio? I think we'll have to start again. So sorry about that. I think it's because I muted my own. Uh, it comes to an end across Europe. Yeah. Millions of birds have been an epic journey south to Africa. One of these brave birds is the osprey. Every year, the osprey faces a journey of extreme challenges across mountains and vast seas, mangroves and rainforests through the searing heat and sandstorms of the Sahara, and many don't make it. But this year, Conservation Without Borders, with an international team of scientists and filmmakers, will follow them on their epic flight. The flight of the Osprey. On this journey of 10,000 kilometres from Scotland to Ghana, we will see the world through the eyes of this iconic bird, by land, air, and even underwater. Once common, the osprey has been driven to extinction in most countries across Europe. But thanks to the dedication of a few along the flyway, the osprey is trying to make a comeback. But resource extraction, urban sprawl, and human impact are changing their world rapidly, and major challenges and questions remain. Why do so many birds disappear on their great migration? And could our global demand for stuff be part of the problem? Travelling through 14 countries, Conservation Without Borders will work with conservation partners, global businesses, and local communities and individuals, gathering vital information and insights across geographic and political borders. We will also meet the people on the ground who are finding innovative solutions to everything from plastic pollution and coastal erosion to the biodiversity collapse, many of whom are also amongst those most affected by their impacts. As a top predator and relying on both trees and good quality water and wetlands to survive, 
the Osprey is not only an icon for the entire flyway, but an indicator of its health. By exploring the challenges and solutions to the Osprey's survival on their great migration, we will also be helping a wide range of other animals that rely on the same habitats, from the tiny tern to the dolphin and the rare saltwater hippo. Conservation Without Borders has a proven track record of connecting media, science, industry and community to create change that spreads across the world. Our previous expeditions have inspired a wave of local and international action, reaching millions of people, winning multiple awards and influencing policy change. So join Conservation Without Borders, our patrons and supporters on the flight of the Osprey and see our changing world through the eyes of migratory birds. That was absolutely fascinating. The, as you can see, the scope of the project is really quite enormous. So what I'd like to do now is uh, hand you over to Kelly on the research team, who's going to tell you a little bit more about it. Sorry, um, actually, I think Sasha's gonna jump in first. Okay, over to Sasha. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so I um, thank you very much, all, all of you for turning up at this, this is amazing. Um, I guess I'd like to start by mentioning briefly where this project came from. Um, it was actually a, it was born on, on the back of a couple of things, the, the expedition following the swans, which had a pretty huge impact. And um, a lot of, I got a lot of support for, for that on the back of it and a lot of requests from people to do more. And then I found myself at the Scottish Ornithological Conference uh, the year afterwards. And um, at a Cayley, the, at the end of the event, um, being held around the dance floor by Roy Dennis. And he said something like, you know what you did for the swans? Uh, do you think you could do something similar for the osprey? And that's where this idea um, really came from. There was always an intention to follow the rest of the flyway as we had by that time done the sort of the northern stretch from, um, from Russia down to the UK. But uh, yeah, Roy's suggestion of the Osprey seemed to really fit. And it has a nice different story to the swans. At the time, there'd been a population that was in drastic decline. We'd lost almost half the population. Whereas the Osprey is a bit different. Um, it's again, a big iconic species, one that lots of people love, but it has started to make a comeback. It's been in a worse situation. Uh, but in order for it to really come back with force into the sort of numbers it should have, um, again, the, the power of connecting lots of people and individuals along a flyway could have a really big impact. And there were also lots of, lots of mysteries along the way. So that's where the idea originally came from. And what is this briefing for? So this, this briefing was because we are going to be actually sort of launching the project uh, publicly. Well, at an, at an event in London on Thursday evening where we have a couple of celebrity guests, Joanna Longley is coming again to that. Um, and then on sort of publicly in the media the following day. So that will be on the, the Friday morning, they'll start being media coverage for it. And before that all started, I realized that there's a whole team of already um, really enthusiastic supporters of the Osprey in conservation, but also in living rooms around the country, who are really the, one, of the, one of the groups of people that we're doing this for, um, but could also be a really powerful part of this project in terms of helping us to deliver impact. And that's what I wanted this um, <coughs> to try and brief everybody on what it's about so you understand it's not just about the media, it's about a whole load of different things and see where you guys can help. So the, um, yes, very roughly, um, Ruth, just so you know, I can see your mouse moving around the screen depending on what you're doing. Um, so the core of it, I'll just mention briefly and then I'll let some of the others in the team describe a bit more of the detail. The core of it is basically a two year project. So it has already started, but the expedition will begin um, in August and will run from Scotland all the way to Ghana. We can talk later about why I'm going to Ghana. I was already um, challenged at the bird fair once on why Ghana when most of the birds only go to Senegal and Gambia. Um, but the core of it is along the way, we'll have a team. I won't be flying uh, on this expedition. We'll do some of the aerials through drones. We'll be meeting people that are living near and around the Ospreys. Uh, we'll be recording their stories and sharing them with you. That's through media and social media. Um, we've also got a team who will be doing some ecological research at some of the different critical sites and hopefully Dio will explain later what, what how that works. 
Um, and then at the end of the expedition, there will be a, a final event in, in Ghana, which will be hosted by the British ambassador. He's incredibly keen on, on wildlife, um, but also engagement in, in West Africa and conservation. Um, so he's going to host an event for us for the heads of industry. Um, and that's actually why we're going all the way to Ghana, the headquarters of many of the companies responsible for management of resources in West Africa are based there and they're a core audience for us. Um, so yeah, that's the next one. Ruth, can you quickly take me to slide number two? Um, so yeah, that's the first year. Um, we will have another event for industry back, back in the UK as well. And then year two for us is sort of follow-up work. So in that time, we'll be making a one-hour film of the expedition. That's not got any arrangements with the broadcaster so that it can be freely available for partners along the, the flyway to use. Um, and it will be created in four different languages for that purpose. We'll also turn out the photos and videos that we collect into an image bank that will be also free to use for conservationists. Uh, one of the things we've identified that there is often a gap for is this kind of creative resource. Um, we're also going to do a survey of all of these groups beforehand to just double check what exactly what kind of resources are useful. And then in that, um, in that follow up year as well, that the film and assets will be available for all the partners that we've engaged along the way to run film showings, which can help them generate more conversations. They could potentially get the film played on their national television. I think that's quite likely that it will run in most countries. Um, and then there'll be talks and follow up campaigns um, etc. From my experience on the flight of the swans, we came across various people along the way who had an issue or an idea but weren't getting enough attention. And so we'll carry on. If we identify people like that that have got a good idea or um, uh, an issue they want to raise, then we'll carry on working with them to try and do that in the following year. And it's amazing what um, impact international support, but also public support, a very visible public support can, can have. And that's one of the reasons that you're all here. Um, and yeah, it, but exactly what we do in, in year two uh, depends very much on um, on yeah interactions with the partners and what we find along the way. Um, but as you see, industry industry is definitely um, a group that we really want to engage. Um, so with that, I think I've covered most things broadly. Can I hand back to you, GMF? You're muted still, I think. Okay, thank you for that. That was a pretty comprehensive uh, overview. Um, we've got various people involved along the way, and one of the people I'd like to introduce you to next is called Dembo Yatta. He is um, based at the moment in Rwanda, um, and I'm getting a hand waving at me. Is <laughs> I, think, I think it's Daya who's next. Okay, well, <laughs> all right. I can't see all of the screen. Sorry about this. Let's have Dio from the media team. Okay, um, thanks. Thanks, Gemma. Um, so I'm actually from the research team, and I'll be speaking about the scientific research objectives that um, we have. Now, um, there are several of us that uh, comprise the team. There's myself, I'm an ornithologist, and that's sort of my background. Uh, there's Kelly, she's an epidemiologist, and um, she's bringing a lot to the team also with the uh, community uh, interviews. Um, we are gonna have a third person join the team as well when we have boots on the ground. Um, and we are, uh, the three of us um, are being supervised by David, uh, David Stroud who was working with the JNCC and has done a lot of work on conservation policy for migrant um, animals um, across the flyway. So um, the research objective, what we are aiming to do, of course, is um, we are going to follow the ospreys, as we've said. And the ospreys are going to be our flagship species for wetland conservation. So we want to draw attention, as Sasha said, to um, a lot of the threats that are happening at the, at the site. Um, in areas where there is targeted persecution um, of ospreys, we will draw attention to that. Um, and we want to interact with, the lo with um, local researchers as much as possible. We have four uh, main research streams or main areas that we're going to focus on. Um, at each of these sites as much as possible. So 
So the first is to monitor ospreys. So we're going to be looking at the end numbers. Um, and we're also going to be trying to record what threats, any um, anything that we can see that would pose a potential threat to ospreys, we're going to try to record this in a standardized, um, following a standardized protocol. Um, the second is to monitor the wetlands themselves. Um, and again, there is a rapid assessment protocol that we will try to, um, that we'll try to follow. Um, the third is engaging with wetland dependent communities. Um, I talked about community interviews. This is where this is going to come into play. And then lastly, we're going to support site level conservation. And this is a big part where we want to, as much as possible, work with local um, organizations, individuals, volunteers. Um, we would have developed uh, and we have developed these rapid assessment protocols. And what would be great is if um, this data collection can continue at the site level um, for you know months and years to, to come. Uh, so well, what we're going to do is get a snapshot of each site, but bring that information across all of the sites along the flyway so that we can sort of talk about either slight differences at certain areas, look at the effect of protection if we can, and um, yeah, just um, make a case um, for the conservation of wetlands as well as the conservation of osprey as a species. Um, I'm going to stop there. It's just a quick run through of what we're going to be able to, what we're going to try to do with the research team. Um, and um, yeah, I think I'll pass the ball back to Jennifer. Thank you. So the next person we would like to introduce is the media team and is uh, who is going to answer the Sasha again. Okay. Hello, Sasha. Hello. Yes, I don't think neither Paul nor Ailey could make it, so I will speak on their behalf. So, we, yeah, this was just to go over what the media team will be doing. So, again, there will be um, a two, potentially three person unit within the expedition crew, although everyone in the team will be uh, contributing uh, images, etc. if they come across anything interesting on the way. The core of what the media team will be doing is yeah, live during the expedition, recording pieces that we can share through social media, um, but also creating the, the one hour film, as I mentioned before, that is basically a film of the flyway aimed at a very general audience so that we give us the best chance possible of getting that onto um, national television. Um, and also this image and footage library, the collection of images I've put in the background are just uh, some of those which the team have collected on the recent recce trips they've done to Africa. Um, we will be hoping that to, to um, put a call out to photographers along the flyway, most likely amateur photographers who are taking images of that show either um, ospreys, general migratory species on the flyway, or potentially show threats along the flyway to see if they're interested in adding to, um, to this pool. Again, these images will then be able to be um, a useful resource for conservationists along the flyway. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will have a, a really big impact and a key part of what we want to do is leave an asset. We don't want to be working along the flyway for more than the two years in particular, um, but to be able to leave enough resources that um, we have, um, yeah, that there's some sustainability around it. Thank you very much, GMF. That's me done for media. Thank you very much. Um, now I'd like to introduce uh, Dembo. Dembo Yatta is... Um, based in, uh, at the moment in, in Rwanda, where he's studying. Uh, he's also going to be coming to the UK and do an internship with Roy Dennis, but uh, that's for another time, I think. His involvement here is, um, he's going to give you an overview of the Youth Conservation Network. He's heavily involved in the uh, flyway, which, um, trying to join up, not just have isolated pockets being done here and there, but have a proper joined up plan to protect uh, not only the birds, but as you've heard from the background, all the other animals and the people along the way who, who are all affected. So over to Dembo. Hi, thank you, um, Gimmick. Um, so basically for the youth collaborations, we have been in touch with um, a lot of um, youths who are very keen along the flyway to be part of the project. And uh, basically they would mostly serve as guides and also would be advising the team on um, what sort of places or 
who, what sort of people to meet in order to collect some uh, uh, stories while they are on the project. Um, but as we are at now, we have um, already had a set of uh, youths who are very keen on joining the project. And these are very, very important in the project because um, having the youths uh, in the project will give us another perspective of how this has um, also involved and impact the, the youth in, within those communities. Uh, some of these youth are really keen on um, environmental issues and climate related issues. And they have been championing and working in their countries to push and make sure that the government set of legislations uh, that are environmentally conscious. And um, these youth have been fighting for a lot of environmental issues, which have a very strong link and connections to some of the um, some of the challenges that Ospreys face while on their journeys uh, across these places. So having them in the project is really, really important and it's very, very critical because it's also raised awareness among the youth population of those communities and those countries to make sure to, to raise more awareness about some of the challenges that, that the Ospreys face or go through while in those countries. Um, yeah, that's basically about it. Thank you. Thank you, Dembo. It's absolutely vital that we get the youth on board and people like Dembo and the people he works with are, are absolutely integral to this. There's no hope for some of the adults. Um, some of you may have heard the dreadful story of the Osprey who was uh, deliberately targeted by a hunter in Malta. This happened just very, very recently. Um, all he wanted was a, a trophy for his collection. As I say, there's, there's no hope for some adults, unfortunately, but with the youth on our side, we can definitely make a difference. And uh, thank you for that overview, Dembo. Um, that is just about it for the briefing. But before we end, we would like to ask um, if you have any questions, ways that you can help. And I think Sasha wants to say something as well. Thank you, GMS. Yeah, thank you. Yes. I did just want to quickly say, oh, I love my people joining the room now. Um, it's just a shame they're coming at this point, but at least the recording is going to be available. So, yeah, I just wanted to to outline. I know a lot of you will be interested primarily in the kind of the Ospreys and the journey of the Osprey. But for those of you who are looking at the kind of back end and how it works, um, I just thought I'd quickly describe our strategy for driving change um, in uh, yeah overall. So the key things are engaging industry that are, that are active in Africa and West Africa. One of the things I noted from giving a, a talk to, um, it was an AWA MOP, the Africa Eurasian Water Bird Agreement uh, MOP in, in Durban a couple of years ago, was that there was a lot of talk about, you know, different actions we needed for conservation. A lot of those involved the impacts of industry, but there was no industry present whatsoever. So I want to find a kind of new and engaging way to to involve them in saying, look, this is what showing them kind of this is what um, this is the, the impacts of your industry. And we're going to see various of them from um, yeah, the extraction of cocoa and deforestation from that, the same with sugar, the, um, it, like serious fishing in parts of West Africa, there will be various different ways that industry is affecting the, the wetland habitats. Um, we want to show them that and ask them to be engaged, not just in giving small amounts of money, but in a, in a deeper way and let's see how that goes. Um, we'll also be doing the same uh, for industry in Europe. We've got various different people quite high up in industry that are going to um, advise on that, which should be really interesting. We want to further uh, resource the conservation partners, as I mentioned before. Um, we, one of the things we really want to do is find stories that count. Another thing that I've noticed from going to various UN um, big conferences is that what is often missing is personal stories from people who are impacted by similar issues and from around the world. So through my uh, ambassadorship with the Convention on Migratory Species, um, there's access to attend and give demonstration and talks at various different UN events on biodiversity, climate change, desertification and others, also through the Global Environment Facility, who are one of our funders. Um, and those what I want to be able to bring to them are really powerful human stories from along the flyway. Um, and then, yes, from 
uh, as you heard from uh, from Dio, there'll be all sorts of data being collected on along the flyway. So we'll also use that as best we can behind the scenes to make sure that the ramps are and CMS parties, etc., are have the best information they have. And also, there's follow up research projects being done by other organisations, and we'll share all that data with them as well. So yeah, I did just want to mention that briefly for anybody who has got questions around the big picture thinking behind the scenes. Back to you, GMF. I think the next slide is about questions. Yes. So oh. how you can help is, um, first of all, have you got any questions now? But uh, you'll think of others along the way. So just keep um, uh, in touch with us. Follow the project. Follow it on social media. Um, I've got a video out at the moment and also a tweet. Uh, we'd like um, to know how Ospreys affect you. How do you engage with them? What are your best and worst moments from Nestcan watching? I know from some of the responses I've received already, it's probably going to be uh, um, hard just to uh, try and, and uh, articulate that because there's so many feelings around it. But really appreciate your time now and your involvement in the project. Does anyone have any questions? And you can see the room. I think there's a question in the chat from Angela. Right, let's have a look. Um, how about schools doing projects to follow this wonderful undertaking? Projects could be done at different levels according to the age of the children. So from primary up to GCSE and equivalent. That's something that the media team will be uh, looking at, the research team, everyone in, in the project will be looking at engaging uh, schools along the way uh, in the UK as, as well. Yeah, we also are running a school programme. Oh, Sashi, I'll probably... I know, go for it. I'll let you do it, Ruth. Sure. So we are working with Wetlands Inc. International um, and the Trust for Sustainable Living we work with schools right along the flyway, um, bringing the media content that we're going to be generating videos about the conservation projects that are going on along the way and just involving the children and the students with our travel to make sure, like Dembo said earlier, that we're, we're hitting mm -hmm. as many people as possible at all ages. And here's an interesting point from Ian. Um, hope you will consider partnering with Ecoflix, the first non-profit TV channel, which is free to schools worldwide. I don't know about Ecoflix, but that's uh, certainly something that uh, we, we will look into and any other suggestions are uh, very much uh, welcomed. Uh, any other? Ian is, Ian is the other um, ambassador for the UN Convention on Migratory Species, um, but a, a primate specialist in the world of land, of land migratory species particularly. Uh, Ian, do you want to make yourself visible and say something? Uh, thank you, Sasha. <laughs> I, I um, I'm, I'm visible for those who are in the right uh, corner of the screen. Um, and and yes, this is a, an amazing project. Congratulations to all involved in pulling it together. Um, I will be uh, keen to discuss all sorts of ways of collaborating, uh, bearing in mind that wetlands are also important for um, elephants and um, apes in Africa. Um, so lots of room for crossover between terrestrial and a avian migratory species. Thank you, thank you. And yes, let's talk about eco Ecoflex. It sounds like it could be a good idea. Uh, certainly Ecoflex is available, it's, it's up and running. It's been up, up for a few months, so it's, it's brand new as it were, um, but have a look at it. And uh, if you do decide, if anyone decides to subscribe, your subscription is actually a donation. It all goes to protecting animals and habitat. So the possibility of, of co-funding some aspects of what you're doing uh, or, or certainly raising the profile of what you're doing, uh, we, we'd be thrilled to be involved. Great. And previous to the question, sorry, in previous answer to Angela, um, I'm open for any schools to engage in whatever way they can. The kind of materials will be uh, will be free. So yes, have a let's have another chat afterwards um, if you want to email. Are there any questions from anybody else? If not, I won't just really briefly run through the different things on our kind of how you get involved sheet. I oh, know. 
Yeah, well, there is another, there, yep. if I'll just interrupt, Sasha, there's another interesting question here. It's from somebody called H. Um, will there be any opportunities for eco-tourists to volunteer either in the UK or along the way or at the destinations? People who want to be more hands-on involved in the flight of the Osprey rather than just um, from their sofas looking at nest cams and, and following the sat-tagged Ospreys and your progress. Uh, Ruth, looks like you might have an answer on that one. I would say the from conversations with some of the partners um, in along the way to Africa, many of them, they're all from sort of different walks of life. Some in NGOs, some are activists, some are within government organizations, some managing reserves, etc. They, many of them are still managing reserves. Can you do that? Is that possible? I've got now really bad feedback. Sorry, I had to mute Sorry. GMF because you're echoing for all the rest of us. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so many of them have struggled during COVID and, and are looking at um, ecotourism options and also looking to get ecotourism going back again. Um, but that will be something that we would be talking about after the expedition. So we'll go and see what's what and hear from different people what they, what they see as solutions for them. Uh, if anybody else, Ian, I'm thinking, I don't know if you've got, uh, if you've been thinking much about ecotourism or if any of your partners are in this part of West Africa, but, um, but that's definitely something we'll be looking at and it is likely to be a solution for some of the places. I would suggest also Dio might want to talk a little bit. I know he was hoping to involve local people on um, part of the research project and that might be something that ecotourists nearby could be able to join with Dio on the um, the survey part of the project? Uh, yeah, that would be something we could look at. Again, it would depend on um, the, 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 again, maybe some of the, the, the background and what uh, most ecotourists usually have a pair of binoculars um, with them anyway. Um, so we're happy to work with everyone, sort of carry everyone along. But I should point out that because we're going to be moving through we're going to be spending roughly around 24 hours ish at a site um we will need to have sort of communicated well ahead of time so anyone that's going to meet us at a particular site will will need to be there because within one day you know left or right of that date we could miss each other just just to throw that out there yeah i i don't think it's realistic to um Ian is waving his hands to um for people to be kind of engaging directly with the expedition but certainly potentially in the following year ian go for it it just occurs to me that there are quite a number of companies that run uh, bird watching tours to West Africa um, and with a conversation with them, finding out if they've got any tours going around the time that you're there, then extra eyes might be helpful and certain extra photographs, extra interests. Uh, not that they're doing it for you, but that they're um, alerting their clients who are going on tours around that time to the fact that this is happening. You might end up with some useful extra binoculars looking at the skies. That will be helpful. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll we'll try to think it through and see how to make it work. Yes, as as you can see, I mean, this is a rapidly changing um, situation as as things come up. What what is decided on is a is a general plan. Um, but it's going to change all sorts of little bits uh, around that. So some of the suggestions that we've received now will be looked into and um, quite possibly things might happen there. The suggestion now of having people who, who are around to um, not exactly join in, but to be part of it. All the feedback that we get is going to be very valuable. Sorry, I'm a bit distracted because I'm looking at a picture of George Anderson from the Woodland Trust and he's got the nest on in the background. And of course, I'm, I keep trying to see what's happening with the nest. George, that's a bit naughty of you, but uh, <laughs> thank you for thank you for attending and thank you for making Woodland Trust's uh, whole archive of footage from the Loch Arcaig nest available for this project. It's very much appreciated. I'm going to move off you now because I'm going to stop looking, stop looking at the nest. Okay, I think we're running um, a little bit over time. Thank you very much for your time. Does anyone have anything burning, pressing issues that they'd like to raise? Sasha. Uh, yes, I just want to very quickly run through. Ruth, would you mind flicking down to the last slide just for a moment for me? Uh, because I just want to clarify <laughs> a couple of things. 
So yeah, right now, as Jim has mentioned, it would be great to hear um, if you've got you know anything uh, answers to the second point here, which was what's so fascinating about the Osprey. What's your best and worst moments? We're trying to capture some of those now, um, but we're also yeah, we'd also love to hear if there are Ospreys that you have been following that have disappeared or something unusual has happened or a character has appeared um, who's helped with that, and you'd like to know more about them. Um, we would love to hear them so that we are um, looking into the, the sorts of stories uh, that you are all interested in. Um, you'll note that we have got our route map is sort of set. It broadly follows the, the Ospreys, but we'll be hitting particular sites along the way. Um, but we've also got this launch coming up on uh, on Thursday evening and then on Friday we'll be putting the video and things out publicly. It would be great if um, you're interested in this and you like the sound of it, if you could help us share that kind of content. The more people we can get following it from the outset, the better. Um, but we'd also love for you to be uh, during the expedition to be asking us asking the expedition team questions uh, engaging it also helps to keep um, team morale up if they know that people are following and watching some of the countries and the places we go and the speed they have to move at um, will be uh, quite a big workload for them but so yeah knowing that there are people interested in following really does help and the um, yeah another in interesting <coughs> is that the um, we'll soon be putting up online the last few of the uh, roles on the expedition team that we'll need to promote. Uh, the more we can get that out there, also amongst the community who are already interested in ospreys or might have some ecological background, it would be great, for example, if we find that our logistics person also happens to be an osprey fan that would kind of get us extra, an extra bonus. Um, and then the last thing we ever mentioned, the, um, the image that we brought, as I mentioned the image library before, um, if you are aware of photographers along the flyway who've taken great, um, great images um, that we should approach to see if they're interested in contributing to the image library. Again, it doesn't have to be professional uh, photographers, but if they're taking potentially useful images, um, then yeah, do let us know. Um, we haven't said anywhere, Ruth, where, who to contact to let us know, but I'm sure we can put that in the chat. That's me done. Over to you, GMF. Can I just quickly say, I've put my email in the chat. Please do copy and paste it now so that you still have it and send me any information that you think will be useful, or any questions, and we can answer those for you. GMF, over to you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your time tonight. Appreciate your future involvement as, as well. We're all Osprey fans, and this is a real opportunity to actually do something that will be of benefit, not only to the birds, but the people that they meet along the way and everything else around them. So thank you very much for your time. Look forward to hearing from you further on. Good night. <laughs>